So Phil's got us on the air now, so uh, I want to start by uh, let's tell everybody uh, that the is being recorded tonight. And um, we do have an 8 o'clock uh, public hearing, so we're going to take care of a couple of things uh, uh, up front. I think I'd like to, um, Greenberry Meadows, all we, uh, all we really have is uh, to sign the restricted covenant, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I read through it, I didn't see anything, you know. Yeah, that I didn't recognize out of the ordinary. So, um, yeah. you need to take a note for that to sign that, or whatever. Well, I think you should just sign it. Yeah. yeah. We have, you know, we should do a I did a copy of so we just like and record. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, do you need So while we're uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to um, uh, I'd like to move to 126 Main Street. We don't have anybody coming. Do we have anybody coming? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I sat by the board. I didn't know if you wanted to okay. stand here or not. Yeah, that's fine. Where you are. Okay. Great. Uh, good evening, uh, Dean McClick, on behalf of Alfred Lucucci, who is a unit owner at 126 Main Street Business Condominium. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, the original declarant, but is now currently the owner of four of those commercial units in that 11 unit business condominium. Um, essentially, uh, the uh, intent of my coming tonight was just for informational purposes at this point. Um, Mr. Antonucci has these four units, and two of the units in particular are being used for an ex a tire and exhaust company, or small, small business. And uh, part of that business is every month there ends up being an overage of tires, or there could be uh, something commensurate with uh, running that business that just by technicality will end up <laughs> outside of the uh, garage. So to alleviate any issues or any future uh, disagreements with the other members of the business condominium, Mr. Antonucci, uh, as well as myself, and speaking with counsel for the business condominium, would like to speak with the board about the possibility of uh, placing a 20 foot long by essentially eight foot high uh, storage container in the rear section of, um, of the site um, for the majority in the rear of the uh, site, it is undeveloped. It's all um, green space that leads into what appears to be wetlands. Um, I do have here just a couple over overhead plans. One is a site plan that was originally uh, recorded at the registry. However, it has uh, since been revised just to show um, corresponding parking spaces. that are located at the unit. And I have a second overhead Google photograph that has been, um, that has uh, had a, essentially what a proposed storage container may be. And uh, this was actually an overhead that was provided to me by Ms. Dabbs when I spoke with her uh, to get some information uh, from her as a conservation agent regarding uh, concerns about setbacks and the like, and the 12 foot no disturb buffer. So uh, 126 Main Street falls within um, the, his, uh, the highway. Um, highway business. Yeah, the highway business district. And um, it is well within the minimum lot area uh, the building size is, well, the lot area is roughly around 52,500 square feet. The building's roughly 12,650 square feet. 
um, and then the building itself is surrounded on all four sides by, um, or at least on three sides by parking. Uh, the idea with this storage container would be to locate it out of the way for a couple of reasons, out of the way so it does not um, take any space or parking spaces away from any of the tenants who are uh, existing there now, while also um, uh, complying with any concerns that the fire uh, department may have with uh, turning radius of fire energy engine. Uh, the, uh, the actual flow of um, vehicles going through is typically coming in from Main Street and staying to the right of the building and going around. Although I don't think as of my stopping there today that there's actually a one way, but that's typically how they do it from my understanding. So um, in terms of what the uh, side setbacks are, rear setbacks, I'm not seeing at this point outside of with the uh, with the exception of possibly a side setback, that um, any, uh, at least as to one side, where considering where we'd like to put it. Uh, Let me ask you a couple of questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the way you have it on this overhead plan, it looks like it might make that corner a little too tight for the fire engines. So I'm assuming that it wouldn't be quite that far forward. Um, and there's a couple of vehicles underneath that yellow thing, so does that mean those vehicles would be removed and the container would go there? Correct. Yeah, that's right. So and there is actually... Oh, sorry. I'm going to put a... Uh, so is, it, is, is it dirt right? It looks like it might be dirt right there. Yes. So some of that is, uh, in, is permeable. Um, and I, right. I, I have spoken with Ms. Baz Baines about that, and that's still um, something that we need Are to discuss. Are you going to put anything underneath it, like a stone bed of some kind? Um, that would be a possibility. I mean, it wouldn't be, I mean, at least for the, uh, for the time period, this would be a storage container that would just be essentially ancillary to the business. So it's so it's real. It's not a permanent. It's not a permanent uh, thing. In other words, it's not a permanent construction. There's not going to be a foundation. Correct. Anything like that. So if you just put some stone underneath it and said it, it's a temporary. Or basically, it would be a temporary for some period of time. You will require a permit from the building department. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And just for purposes of the highway district under uh, business district under uh, two hundred dash. Three nine A two F two. This it, this is for like the outdoor storage of materials, i.e., through via storage container. Yep. And it's not possible without approval of site plan review right. from the planning commission. So, well, if it's inside that container, then you it's not <coughs> inside storage. I think that the concept here is to try to not leave a mess out in the yard. So, uh, and to put everything away in the container and then work from there. Um, Okay, so you're looking for direction tonight about which way you go with this? Well, to your point, I also to clarify whether or not the storage container itself, in and of itself, would have acted as uh, outdoor storage. So, uh, no, if it's inside storage, if it's in, okay. it also says if it's fenced, you can have outside storage if it's properly fenced. Yeah. In this case, it would be properly fenced all the way around. If you will. So, right. that would have done. so the, the so, idea. Um, okay, so let me just check with the rest of the board. What do you have, Chris? What I say? I, I don't think there's a problem. I mean, it's better than being like been back there. It's, it's better than having a mess. Yeah, better than having a mess. Right. Yeah. The, and the, the whole idea I, I prior to my time was Dave. You know, was, uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I thought originally the request it was going to be more upfront. So where where I see it is fine. I I think you should try to get a little bit more specific about where it's at. Because in the two different images. The, the, what you call it, the line drawing, it shows it much further back, or maybe not to scale. And then the one that's the aerial, it shows it, as Warren pointed out, much more forward. So as long as there's something telling them what that clearance is, so the fire department knows they've got 25, they get whatever, to make that feet. corner. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, um, and the other thing would just be, when you put a permanent structure like this, in a semi-permanent, whatever, and there's two things. You want to keep it dry, right? So you're with conics boxes, they're pretty self-contained, but you might want to get it up. But the problem is sometimes when you get it up, you create a spot for pests, raccoons, things. Well, that's why you, if you do so a, if you do since having done many of these, if you do a stone, if you put a stone bed underneath it, and then just run the stone, and just run. I was going to say because that you don't want to really 
put it up and leave a void with yeah. these minus boxes yeah. because so you put like three quarter stone down, you put stone right up against the edges of it. <coughs> Nothing goes under there. And also fire can't get under there and so forth. So that's a, so that's the best way to, to do that as a temporary storage situation. Do you recommend three quarter stone with blocks underneath? No, you don't want to leave a void under there. Unless you leave a big void. I mean if you left it if you had it two feet in the air that'd be yeah, okay. Right. But if you're not going to have it two yeah, feet in the air, bury, bury the bottom of it in stone so that you won't have any, again, no pests and, right. and, uh, I think and no question, fire and nothing can get under it. But the question, Mr. Chairman, that he asked, I think is a good one. Because of the weight, those units are extremely heavy and then filled with rubber, tires, whatever they'll be. Yeah. You should probably put it on some sort of dunnage, but as Warren said, then just build up around those edges with some sort of stone or yeah. on a stone bed because it will just start sinking, seeing, you know, that it'll sink one corner or whatever, but you can always jack that up and throw, throw some shims under it or whatever, but that's what I would do. I just this three-quarter stone up. usually does the job. I have yeah. a number of yeah, people yeah, like that, like mag. I've done it and they don't move. You know. now, you know, not, we're not talking two inches of stone, we're talking six inches of stone. And yeah, then, it's deep. Yes, and then, right. and then bring the stone around the side so, so that there is no access underneath it, so that it's safe. Definitely no access, yeah. You know, that's all. It's not that big of a deal. It takes no time. Jeremiah. Yeah, I mean, the choke point in the corner, like you already mentioned, in the state yeah. of yeah, The fire department's got to sign off on that. Yep, yep, yep. Right, so, so I basically what we would probably need to say, is, as Dave mentioned, is uh, plan a little more precise with actual dimensions. You know, um, maybe a plan with the scale plan, scale plan with the uh, container on it scaled so that we, you can see exactly how it goes. We can make the fire department happy, and that's probably what we'll, all you would require. What kind of, um, would there be a filing with us at all? Um, it's a temporary structure, so it doesn't, it's not something that, that, that's, that's, that affects site plan. Okay. In other yeah, words, it could be so. removed at any time. There's no foundation right. and everything. And, and it's, <coughs> if it uh, becomes a, a, a situation where it's too small, they may come back and want a 40 footer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, again, that makes it a temporary structure. Okay. okay. Great. It's not permanent. Yeah, that's right. But he still has to go to the building inspector for yeah, this. Oh yeah. And then, you know, site <coughs> setbacks and yeah. stuff. I think for this is like 10 feet, right, Warren? It is a residential, at least, for a temporary building. It's 10 feet up. So yeah, yeah. I, think I don't know what it is for in this area off the top of my head. Yeah. You're all set? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. And again, thank you, Dave, for clarifying all those things ahead of the time. Yeah, it, <laughs> it saved a lot of questions. That was, uh, <laughs> that's why I like to read that. I read your letter and I read yeah. responses. <laughs> and back, it doesn't out. matter so much. <laughs> and then I looked at where it was and I said, oh, this is in the back. Okay. It's where it should be. Did everyone sign the covenant? Yeah, please. Okay, um, Chris, will you do the submitted for us April 5th? Sure. Um, hang on, let's get there. Okay. That's probably a motion. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Actually, I'm on the Their motion is simple. Mr. Beers, I move that we accept the minutes of Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, as written. I have a motion to have second. Second. Okay, I have a motion to have second. Um, any further discussion? Corrections or omissions? Nothing? Okay. Okay, all those in favor, I'll please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain, Mr. Beers. Okay, I've got I was not here for this meeting. Okay. But did you read the minutes? I read, read the minutes, but then you can vote on them if you like. I suppose I could. Yes, you can. All right. Thank okay. You okay. Then I have four in favor and no opposed. Uh, Mr. Carroll's not here. Tonight. No. No. Do you want to uh, copy these to your records, Danielle? Oh, uh, uh, sure. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah, you, you know, because I mean, obviously we're going to get something a little more, you know, in the future. Thank you. As we, uh, as we go along. <coughs> Okay, um, 
So at the last meeting, we, were, we talked about nominating you, Chris, to the EDC, but you were not here, and I would not do that to you <laughs> without you being here. So I told them I would not vote unless you were here. So. Thank you, you, Warren. Are you okay to be on the... I am for now. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, uh, do we do, do we I have a, I have a motion. We have a motion. Okay. Well, yeah, you do your motion. Yeah, no, David's going to do it. David's going to do a motion. Do the motion. Do motion for yourself. I move that the Community Planning Commission move to appoint Chris Hayden as the CBC representative member to the Economic Development Committee during the period starting April 19th to May 9th, April 19th, 2022 to May 19th, 2023. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion and a second by Mr. Johnson. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. I always abstain. You What's and me. I'd like the record show three in favor and one abstention. And that is one opposed. <laughs> and that is the end. So our, 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 I never vote for myself for anything. Fair enough. Yeah. Unless you need me. I mean, yeah. If I, if I was part of the quorum, then I would vote. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the EDC, they're working away trying to get some more things done. So uh, yeah. I, I, That's the last meeting. Yeah. I'll be, be at this meeting. Yeah. I might get shot, but I will be. So 26 is the wife's birthday. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what? They got? Do they have anything? To, I know they were doing some, looking at yeah, some functions. Yeah, we're working on. We're working on uh, some stuff for um, another like coffee yeah. coffee shop actually more of it in the evening right yeah like the june event last like year we had one last year um which really went up off well um business people came a lot of people came but a lot of business people showed up a lot of community uh committee people showed up um from other other commissions and committees um which is good got to know people mm -hmm. heard a little bit about sewer met joe yeah, Joe's good. Yeah, he's great. He's very knowledgeable. He he did he did and he did for a while. Like yeah, he did a bunch of different a, 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 a bunch of different jobs in different towns relating to getting sewer put in and, right. and, and doing it. So he's very knowledgeable. Yeah. So if you read that proposal we put together, it was quite good. So. Yes. Yes. So. All right. Um, Okay, we got a few more. Do have, I don't see any ZBAs in there. No ZBAs. Ah, uh, no. Okay. Um, if you um, um, in the five minutes before we have our excuse me, our continued public hearing, do you have any updates or anything on, on that? Sure. Um, I know you got a couple of things. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to mention um, we. We should have a draft very soon to share of the Route 28 corridor study. Um, I did see a preliminary draft. Um, I did want the opportunity to check with the town engineer to be sure he's read it and there isn't anything major that he wouldn't want included in that. Um, but I'm hoping either for our next meeting or possibly the one after, we would have a draft to look at, maybe give them some feedback. Um, it seems to be set up in such a way that it's not a, a strong recommendation of you should do it this way or that way, but here are all the different things you might do with the corridor and if you do it, these will be the impacts and it kind of shows the corresponding traffic impacts to each one of them and they go through and they do a pretty nice job of um, highlighting what all the repairs are that actually could be made right now um, that DOT should should be doing um, even if we did nothing else which would really improve some things so um, I'm hoping to have that draft to share with you um, hopefully by our next meeting um, I did go ahead and submit the uh, community information form that's required for the MBTA communities. It was due uh, May 2nd. Um, it's really just the information form to say that we uh, believe we do have a district that would be a good candidate for meeting the regulations, though um, it does not fully comply. And so um, we would request you know, any technical assistance or grant funding that would be available um, to help us. Have we, gotten any, have we gotten any updates on, on the, the criteria? I mean, it, it seemed to me that there were a number of towns, and we talked about mm -hmm. Reading, for example, and where are they going to go? Right. So, I mean, I mean, where they would be, where you could either opt out or get a, um, a waiver as a result of the fact that you don't like, for example, we don't have any MBTA services in our town, so 
we don't have any place where we can put something that MVP, unless they've got to bring us a train line or a bus or something, you know, which I don't well, see that happening anytime soon. They did write that in to, they, even if in this situation, they still expect us to have a district. Um, it's just that there's no requirement that it be within a certain distance of any train station. We definitely did include that, though, in the comments that were submitted. Um, that was, you know, it was mentioned at that uh, meeting that we had with the select board that there right. should be some type of waiver, and that was definitely included in those comments. But we won't have the final draft guidelines um, probably until the summer. So what I'm hearing from the other communities is that they're not doing any work on this really yet until those final guidelines come out, because if those are very different, then a lot of work will be wasted. Well, <laughs> so, I'm wondering if they, I'm wondering if they, um, if what they're looking for is for us to commit, um, say, okay, we have an area that we think could be the area, and so so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put that out there as the area we're gonna use to comply, and, th and then they're gonna come back and say, well, it looks like we could probably get a bus to that area. In other words, if we do our part first, will they do their part second? I don't think they're offering that at all. So well, I that think that's a problem. <laughs> but that may be in the plan. You know? I, don't know. I doubt it. It hasn't been. Yeah, there's really no plan to expand their service at, at all. Um, yeah, so it's yeah. just that I'm surprised that it's a little fast and loose right now, you know, and, and they're asking us to do something and they don't even have all of the details worked out yet. Well, they just have the, dra the draft guidelines, which means that we, we really shouldn't do anything definitive. Um, they're kind of collecting the information from each community and they want to know what we think we can comply with. Um, we know we don't comply, but right. we do have some districts that are decent candidates for coming into compliance. So I've, you know, I've reported that and described what we do have. Um, but in terms of knowing exactly what our guidelines will be that we actually have to adhere to, we won't really know that until the summer. So I, we're, I think we're okay to, to wait until that happens yeah. to really see what we're responsible for. So um, yeah. that's, you know, as soon as I get those guidelines, I'll be sure to share them yeah. with you. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to be quite a bit of work to figure out. It seems compliance. like a little bit of the cart before the horse, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll end date that soon. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of uh, projects that we're expecting to see submittals for pretty soon. Um, the Anthony Road subdivision um, sounds like it's coming back in. It's coming back in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's been a little bit of a holdup, I guess. Um, National Grid, they, they really wanted National to Grid to re review everything before it came in, which right. I said is a really good idea because the last yeah, time it was, yeah. a, it was a big issue. The crossing over yeah. there, uh, yeah. the right away, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea to, to get a yeah. full signed off disclosure from them. It's been very delayed on, now, on their gonna, part are they, are they proposing changes to the plan other than things that might be required by National Grid? Because if I recall, one of those houses over on Anthony Road is going to be an affordable house, affordable. Yeah, um, corner. I don't know if they've completely started from scratch or I haven't seen their plan at all. So I'm not really sure what they have in mind. Um, but I, I think it will be coming in soon. Yeah. So, um, and then the other Project. I just checked in with um, Attorney Latham about the 148, 150 Park Street project because I do get calls every so often. Yep. Um, people really want to see that built, um, and they expect to file soon. So I think we'll be ha we'll have probably those two projects to be working on uh, by the summer. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention, as, as Chris mentioned, the Economic Development Committee is planning two events this year, one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, and the one in the spring they are hoping to have on May 24th, um, working on a venue, but uh, that's supposed to be the date. Um, I'll give you more information as we have it. Mm -hmm. um, and the Kleinfelder study for the sewer planning is, is underway. Um, we've given them a lot of contacts for businesses to reach out to, and um, Joe has been working really closely with them to figure out what the assessments might look like, and they're going to be sending out some communications soon to businesses and to residents to um, start you know, asking questions. A survey will be part of that for um, selected businesses and selected properties of, you know, a certain size and, um, you know, there will be another type of outreach for, for everybody else. So um, that's underway and um, I sh should mention Charles Street since I haven't in a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't ask, ask you this time. <laughs> no, you, you didn't, but it's, it's a little bit of a mess. So I just wanted to bring it up. It's just, it's got a lot of uh, sediment and kind of um, erosion controls are not being kept up with and right. so you know between you know Dave Giangrande and you know 
Leah Basby and then myself were communicating with the owner to to and get that stuff cleaned up. That Leah had some issues out there too. Yes, yes, she does. So Leah and I are meeting um, with the owner um, on Tuesday morning. So we're going to talk through those things. Dave gave me a punch list of everything he wants to see done ASAP. Uh, certainly before it really starts, you know, vegetating. Um, it, I drove through and it, it it really does it really does still look messy. So. Um, that was going to be a difficult project no matter what. That was a difficult site. For sure. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. That's, that's all I have. Good. Okay. Well, we're just in time. Seeing 802. <coughs> 802. I'm going to open the continued public hearing for 14 Concord Street, site plan review. the public hearing notice into the record last time because we just opened it and continued it so I think okay. we will need to do that you have one um, I can, I can. Can you do oh sure I, I mean I think it's on it is on oh but none of you can see it because you can't get your 14 comments all right I think I came in too. once. Yeah. I think we saw you then too. I think we once did. I mm -hmm. came in yeah. in the summer and then you went back to being remote. Mm -hmm. Zooming. There's a lot of benefits and a lot of detriments to Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's it's great for easy meetings, but when you've got to look at plans, oh, I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. It's hard to ask a question about a plan when you're looking at it this size, or even on a computer bigger. Um, so. Whenever I, was in, whenever I was in Zoom, my, my iPad was here, but I was always looking here because I was I was on my Apple, my bigger monitor, looking at. But stuff. it makes sense because also, you know, I'm controlling the screen when you're looking, so I'm putting up what I want to show you, yeah. and then I don't exactly know maybe what you want to see. You can't much better in person when it's a complicated it project. Yeah. If you're coming in for a simple, you know, setback issue for a house, okay, garage for house non-conforming use, easier. Yeah. Zoom, but not for a big project. And I think with the last project I did, we came in in person for a lot of it. It was just the final wrap up that we ended up, you know, doing on Zoom. Okay. But the good thing about the Zoom was we got a lot of participation. Yeah, a lot of people were in. A lot of people were able to participate in the <coughs> because they were. Um, they didn't have to leave the house. Yeah, they could just yeah, they didn't have to go right back. Mr. Pierce. Mr. Hay. Notice is hereby given that. The North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April the 5th, in room uh, 2022, in room 14 of the North Reading Town Hall at 8 p.m. on the application of Sergio Coviello for a site plan review for the property located at 14 Concord Street. Plan entitled Site Plan, 14 Concord Street, Town of North Reading, Assessor's Map 18, Parcel 15, drawn by LJR Engineering Incorporated. A copy of this plan is on file with the Community Planning Commission office Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4 p.m., 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. 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 
Thank you. No? No, that's just reading. Just a reading. Sorry. Just a reading. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. Bill. Good evening, Jill Mann from Man and Man, located in Middleton on uh, North of South Main Street. I am the um, legal counsel for Sergio Cobiel in connection with his application for site plan approval to develop the property located at 1214 um, Concord Road. Um, here with me this evening is Lou Boy from LJR Engineering, also Joe Tatone, who is the architect, um, and Rebecca Brown from GPI, who is the traffic engineer. Obviously, Sergio Cobiello is here, as well as Jagger Cobiello, principals um, with regard to Cobiello Electric, which will be the primary tenant of the property. So as you all know, this property um, happens to be what we re-permit or rezoned this past summer from residential to um, industrial office. The property is 14 acres, um, and we do show it here. Who could go through the plan with you in more detail than I will, but I'll at least give you the summary. So it's a 14 acre parcel, approximately 11 acres of which are located in the Aquifer Protection District. Um, as you can see, Luke outlined it in yellow for you so that you could actually see where that district is. There are a lot of wetlands on the property, I and mean, I think we even talked about this during the um, rezoning. And it was pro previously it had been used as a farm, um, a turkey farm. This is also the project that has that paper street that runs on the side of it. So I'm going to keep, so yeah, this is probably the better plan to look at. So this does still show the existing improvements, which are those farms that are going to be taken out. The existing single family home uses are going to stay. So we'll keep the residential uses in the front because this is a separate parcel of land that we're going to access. Basically, when we had gone out there to the site, um, you know, it became pretty tight because of the existing wetlands and where they were located. So we had to break the project into two buildings instead of having it into one building. As a result of that, we're going to do it in two phases. So I described it in my, my application. Sorry, something stabbed me. I got my own book. Um, we, we were going to break it down into two phases, basically because um, the Kobe Yellows really want to relocate their business to this particular property. So phase one is going to be that 22,000 square foot building that will serve as the principal location for um, Kobe Yellow Electric. They are going to have a mezzanine, but it's only going to be for storage, so there won't be any lift. It's not going to be um, elevated. It won't be, so to speak, um, accessible because it literally is going to be just storage. Um, they do have an outdoor storage component, just like they do currently at their um, existing building. They even have a fuel supply place, and I noticed that a couple of a couple of times it was mentioned: is the fuel storage within the aqua protection, or is it outside of it? And that was mentioned by both the planner, Ms. McKnight, and the fire department. Those fuel storage tanks are located intentionally outside of the aqua protection district because we're required to do that. Um, one of the other elements of the aquifer protection district is you can't render impervious more than 15% of the area. And we comply with that, we're under, even though this entire building and its development is in the aquifer protection district. And again, basically because it's such a portion <coughs> of land that it is in that particular area. So the property is going to require that we cut in a new roadway and a new access. Um, as a result of that, we did hire um, a traffic consultant who is around it. Um, to basically review and to confirm that the site is going to be safe from a site distance perspective, access perspective, and then also what the contributing issues are on the roadway. She did make a couple of suggestions of what we can do to just improve the general area and its current condition, and those are included in that report, and Ms. Brown can go through the report. Um, we did submit a full stormwater report. We do have all of the plans showing the setbacks to the wetland. And by the way, we did apply already and submit the notice of intent to the Conservation Commission and had had our meeting. We would have been here first, but you know, it didn't work out. So we had had the meeting like right after the original meeting was scheduled. Um, and we're due back in, when are we due back to the second Wednesday in May. Sec okay, second Wednesday. We're doing second. a site visit with them this coming Saturday. Oh, so they'll be, okay, so there's a site for this, so I don't know, sometimes the planning board members like to attend that as well. If you do, it's Saturday at what time? Uh, I'd have to look at my notes. Yeah, I can, I can get that information to uh, Ms. Midnight tomorrow if somebody would like to attend that meeting, but it's Saturday. Um, so our purpose is to be able to get the notice of intent submitted, heard, and an order issued um, before you render your decision, or at least simultaneous. 
Um, again, it's a 22,000 square foot building. We did provide you with a full landscape plan, and we did comply with all of this. Which was the landscape plan? Yes. I have my van away right here. He knows where all of his drawings are. <laughs> he won't rip them either. Right. <laughs> I, I might there you go. So um, we comply with all of the landscaping requirements, which say you have to maintain a certain amount of landscape buffer when you abide a residential area. Even though we don't literally abide um, any any um, residential use other than up front on our own property, and we did landscape for it. Um, I'm going to let Luke go through the whole stormwater discussion with you, but I just wanted to go through this part. So we plan on, once we get approval, we would begin the building as soon as we could get a building permit. Um, we're anticipating, once we finish it completely, everything's done fully, then we would start phase two. However, because we will be in the middle of doing stormwater, the reason why we want to get it all done at once is because they aggregate no matter what. So we do have a stormwater facility out behind the building, plus there is a wetland crossing. So we really had to permit this all at once, even though the actual construction, the, per, the crossing will be done, the storm will be made, but the building itself will not be built until the existing Coviello building is complete and occupied. Um, just so you can see this, here's a copy of what the building is going to look like. Um, it is completed state. So again, we do have a mezzanine, so we do show windows on the top just to give it some visual appeal. Um, the entrance, you can see, we are proposing, obviously, to fence it because we have outdoor storage. So as a, a requirement of the outdoor storage is to create a fence. We have a fence, we have a gate, um, and then it goes back around and then to the back building, kind of in a round building, which you saw. Yeah. So I just want to show you a couple of This is Joe's own beautiful work. Um, and I did include for you the floor plans, so you can see them. So basically, you would come in, here is the entrance, this is the front, but this will really be where you enter around the side of the building. This is not a dumpster, it's a, it's a um, completely enclosed, basically compactor for all the cardboard they have. So that's what this is. The dumpster's around the back and it will be um, and here we go. This is just how we're going to have. We have one loading dock and then one drive-in door for the facility. Um, and again, the storage is around the back of the building. That's it. So at this point, um, I think it's probably a good idea if I turn it over to Luke and he give you more details. And then if you'd like to hear, um, Rebecca can give you some details also about the traffic. And if you have questions, I can answer them too. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. You're very welcome. So I'll just um, briefly summarize some of the, the engineering uh, aspects that went into the site design. Um, one of the main things was the topography and grading of the site, uh, mainly with the uh, highest elevations being along Concord Street and then the lowest elevations at the wetlands and then ultimately at the, the Ipswich River at the very uh, back boundary of the site. Um, so the, it was really a balancing um, cut and fill in the sense that a, a level slab building of this size, um, we're cutting to some extent uh, at the front of the site and the, the driveway is going to be, uh, you know, uh, down gradient coming into the site, dropping into where the building is. Uh, the septic system is elevated at the front um, and then uh, and then a, a fill through this uh, rear side um, with some retaining walls, um, stormwater areas at the at the down gradient at the low side of the uh, of the site. Um, we've got 24 foot wide drive access driveway through the site, uh, wetland crossing, um, as Jill mentioned here for access to the rear building and uh, replication area here. One of the other main parts to the design that was kind of important and critical in this case was the, the stormwater design. Uh, the site being 
uh, within the aquifer protection district and also adjacent to the Ipswich River. Um, we paid special attention to the, the stormwater regulations, not only the town bylaw, but the DEP's of stormwater regulations in complying with those requirements for pretreatment. Uh, we've got a, a deep sump hooded catch basins throughout the site for collection. Uh, we've got pretreatment structures, um, uh, oil grid separated tanks, um, sediment floor bays, and then infiltration basins um, strategically located um, at collection points uh, for the stormwater. Um, and we've documented, documented all the, the, the details of that in the stormwater report. Um, and I, I know that, uh, I, I understand DCI has been um, engaged as far as a review. I would certainly look forward to uh, addressing any comments or input that they have. Um, and also the commission, any initial comments or questions, um, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? I just have a question. Luke, where's, show me where the fence line would be, the proposed fence line around the building. Um, there's a fence and a gate right here, and then it'll continue. It'll carry on the top of this retaining wall to the stormwater basin there. So it's mainly all just the area where you have the outside storage. Right. Okay. I didn't know how far if it went all the way up to the main road. No fencing. It yeah, it just it closes to the building right yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Anybody else? Jeremiah? Height of the building? 30, uh, no, 29. 29. It's just under 30 feet. Okay. Which is within the spec of it. Yeah. <coughs> right. Because, you know, when you go in with the, with the big trucks and everything, that's why it's Yeah. It's, it's all, all steel? Yes. Steel skin? One other question, maybe more traffic on the suggestions. What, was there sight line coming, looking back towards Bobcat? Is there anything on the Bobcat property that you recommended be pulled back a little bit? Or? How about if we have to go back and give you a yeah, brief? Yeah, There are some yeah. things she strongly suggested that yeah. we're going to do, and, and I think it's um, the traffic pool is well written. Okay. Great. Very informative. Thank you. Thank I know this might be a little hard to see from there, but I can kind of just point to it and explain. Um, so we did put together a traffic impact assessment for this project, which really looked at how much traffic would be generated and then focused mostly on the safety of the driveway itself. Um, based on the fact that this is a pretty low traffic generator, even with the two phases combined, so we really were focused on just the safety of the driveway. Um, but we did look at trip generation for the site um, and we use the standard Institute of Transportation Engineers or ITE data that was available. And then we also um, got some information from the applicant on their existing facility for the numbers of employees that they have um, and the number of uh, deliveries and um, construction vehicles that they have, uh, or um, not construction vehicles, but... Um, Service vehicles. Yeah, <laughs> the number of contracting vehicles, that's what we're contracting, not construction, uh, contracting vehicles that are uh, coming in and out. Um, so we, even though they're coming out during an extended period, we looked at a worst case scenario, if they were all coming in and out during the same peak hour, what would that generate for traffic? Um, and so with the two buildings combined, it would be roughly 47 trips during an hour if we were to combine all the, the employees that arrive over a three hour period into one hour. Um, so pretty low volume traffic that would be generated by this. We did also look at um, the collision history along this section of roadway, um, starting from the Bobcat driveway, going all the way up to Park Street um, over the most recent five year period to see how many crashes had actually occurred there. And then we compared that to um, the state and the district-wide averages for similar types of roadway. And what we found was that the crash rate for this section of roadway is about half of what the state and district-wide average is. 
Um, but what we did note is that the majority of the crashes that were happening there, although there is a low number, um, were speed related. So there were two that had occurred as vehicles were going around this curve by the Bobcat driveway, um, or just north of it, where vehicles went off the road. And then there were also two sideswipe crashes and two head-on crashes that happened in that same area from vehicles that crossed over the center line while they were coming um, around this curve right here. Um, and that's really important when we look at travel speeds on the roadway. So in order to assess the sight lines on the road, we did um, do a speed study too, to look at travel speeds. And right now headed northbound um, through this curve, it is posted at 40 miles per hour. Um, and traveling southbound is posted at 30 miles per hour. Um, so there's quite a difference there in, in what's posted. The actual um, observed speeds, or 85th percentile speeds, that's the speed that about 85% of the <coughs> are at or below, and is generally considered the design speed of the roadway, uh, was 38 to 39 miles per hour, depending on direction. Um, so significantly higher than the posted 30 mile per hour southbound, uh, but consistent with the 40 mile per hour northbound. In the vicinity of this curve, there are currently no curb advisory warnings signs that are located out there that you would typically see um, going around the curve. In addition, if you're coming off of Park Street and you're turning on um, to Concord Street, there is an existing 30 mile per hour speed limit sign, but it's located um, on a utility pole that's set far back from the edge of the roadway and it's almost entirely blocked by vegetation. Um, you have to really look to see that sign. Uh, which we believe is probably contributing a little bit to the high uh, travel speeds going southbound. So that was the 39 mile per hour speed was headed southbound through, through this area. Um, so some of the recommendations that we made were to post um, advisory, curb advisory signs in advance of this curve from either direction and supplement that with the um, curb advisory speed placards so that it would note uh, that this curve should be traveled at 30 to 35 miles per hour, um, depending on the, the radius of, of this curve. And then also um, relocating the sign that is located up by Park Street um, so that it will be posted on a signpost and be visible, and then supplement that with uh, those orange flags that are on the top of the sign to help draw attention to it. Um, so that people notice that, there, that the roadway is posted for 30 miles per hour. When we looked at the sight lines for the proposed driveway, we did find that looking to the south near the Bobcat, that the sight lines there do actually meet um, AASHTO's minimum recommendations for the 85th percentile speeds. Um, so there is adequate sight line there um, going to the south. Uh, where we actually um, found that there was some deficiency was looking to the north as you're exiting the site driveway, uh, where right about in this area here, uh, there's some trees that are located there as well as a little bit of an embankment that was blocking um, the intersection site lines. So we did recommend some regrading in here, uh, which has been reflected on the site plans. Um, and with that regrading, you will be able to meet ASHTO recommendations for the minimum required site distance in that direction. Um, but the, there is also a crest in the roadway, a vertical crest in the roadway, right about in this location right here. And when you're approaching um, along Concord Street, approaching the driveway, um, you would not be able to see far enough ahead of you if you're traveling at that 39 mile per hour speed that people are traveling right now to be able to see a vehicle that is coming out of the site driveway. So the car that's approaching here wouldn't have enough time to see um, somebody that's approaching. That's the only one that does not meet um, the, the AASHTO recommended sight lines. We can't extend that one without regrading the entire roadway in this area um, and with the grades of the properties that are immediately adjacent and uh, those buildings immediately adjacent, we wouldn't be able to regrade the roadway. However, we would only need to lower the travel speed on that roadway by one mile per hour in the southbound direction to be able to have the sight lines meet AASHTO requirements. 
And so that is why we're recommending the, those speed measures to um, relocate the posted speed limit sign and post curb advisory signage as well um, to help slow people down. And then another measure that could also help to increase the sight lines uh, in both directions coming out of the driveway would be as you're traveling northbound on Concord Street, right now it's striped for a 15 foot wide travel lane and a one foot shoulder, which with a 15 foot travel lane gives people the impression that they can travel pretty quickly around that curve. Um, so what we would recommend doing is actually narrowing the roadway to provide a 12 foot travel lane and a four foot shoulder in that area. By providing, uh, by narrowing the roadway, it should act as a traffic calming measure to slow people down. But also by having that wider shoulder, it gives somebody who's exiting the driveway the opportunity to kind of stop at the stop bar, check for traffic, and then inch up a little bit into that shoulder <coughs> and see a little bit further um, along the roadway uh, to increase the sight lines there. Can I ask um, a so question? Do, how much does the elevation of the driveway itself, where you're coming out of, play a role in some of the sight lines, especially to, I guess, to the north, where it yeah, seems like so that's, that's the... That's the one that yeah, is that's the tricky be the one, one is going to the north, and that's so why you we just add that Luke, you just grade. add the pretty much the grade of the street, and there's not I know it goes downgrade to the to the building, but can you elevate that a little bit to have that kind of staging area so you get a good look out? Yeah, so the shifting the driveway any further north really quickly steepens it that much more, and the driveway's car probably about as steep as we really gotcha. would be comfortable having. Gotcha. I guess so. um, that so would help we a little got bit. Got it kind of to like the, the best balance of uh, those interests that we, we felt uh, matched. What's, the, yeah, what's so the grade of the driveway as it enters onto uh, um, Parker Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I'd have to pull <coughs> off the, uh, I could take a measurement and tell you what that percentage is, but it, it was getting up there where it was, I wouldn't be comfortable yeah, you know, making it much steeper than it is, especially with the the vehicles and equipment that. Yeah, that was that was kind of the next one of the questions I had. What what's you gonna have tractor trailers coming in and out? Just put the liveries in. Just the liveries in. Okay. And we, and we yeah. needed to have a little bit of a landing area, you know, rather than we can't just drop right off right. the edge. Yeah, you gotta you gotta yeah. come in and then you're make more than right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a flat area. Yeah. Well, the thought, the thought, of course, was that if the area going onto the, onto um, Concord Street was uh, was fairly level and not too steep, that we'd have the ability to, to uh, maybe make it a little bit higher so we could see a little further. Yeah. So the issue isn't actually on the site itself. So with the regrading in in this area here, mm -hmm. you can get adequate sight lines for um, the vantage point from the driver sitting on the driveway and looking mm -hmm. out. It's actually a long, um, coming down long the Concord Street yeah. coming up over that hill and then down it. that yeah. you wouldn't be able to see. And you're saying you. slow it down like the 37 miles an hour? Not to, the, not to the posted 30. 30. Is, the, 30 is the, exact, the posted 30 yeah. gives you plenty of sight, sight view. Exactly. Like they're traveling five, they're almost 10 miles an hour yeah. over so that. So what you the have the for visibility <laughs> from this point, you know, back over the crest mm -hmm. is adequate for mm -hmm. speeds of 38 miles per hour. Okay. We measured 39 miles per hour, so we just we need to slow people down just a little bit, and they'll have adequate so stopping sight distance. These, these recommendations you make are these are these recommendations <coughs> that the town would do, or the uh, Sergio would do? Yeah, these could be done as mitigation yeah. for the project, yeah, as a condition of approval. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the the narrowing of the street. I understand the logic, but if there is. You know, bigger trucks coming and going. It seems like narrowing the streets on that stretch could be a little bit dangerous. So you do have some pretty heavy, uh, heavy trucks that travel up and down that road. Yeah, and um, those trucks sure would be narrow. able to, you know, go over onto the shoulder a little bit. Um, they could overhang onto the shoulder um, if they needed to. But a 12-foot lane around that curve should be more than enough mm -hmm. for a tractor trailer truck to navigate that curve. It occurs to me that since uh, Mr. Covello already has. A place on Concord Street. He's already driving back and forth on that road. So, <laughs> so the actual increase will be, however, he grows. Would actually be a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is the increase to the four-foot shoulder just 
adjacent to the entrance, like a certain distance on each side of the entrance? Yeah, so it's it? really just a restriping of yeah. the roadway. It's not. I think that's a good idea. I actually think that's, that's, that's a good way. idea. Yeah, so right now it's a 15 foot travel lane. Yeah, which I think that's allows a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't change the asphalt. No, it changes the. Not. It changes, it changes the line, the which <coughs> brings people. Oh wait a minute! It's a little narrow up here. Yeah. It's a corner comes up. Like it gives people a big right. impression. Well, it moves people a little further out into the street too, which yes, means that they that they will be visible from the block from the further distance because they're more into the street as opposed to being on the sides. Yes. Okay, any other questions on traffic? Here? Very helpful. Thanks. 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 Good. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions from the guy? I, I see you've got a lot of work to do as far as for, uh, for mitigation of the water in the wetland areas. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So yes, we still have more work to do before the conservation commission, and obviously, um, DCI's review. He is just starting it. Like, if anything, maybe this week. I don't even know if you will. So usually it'll take Dave at least three weeks to get you a comment letter, and then we need you know, Luke um, to respond back. So I mean, that would take at least probably a couple of weeks. So we're we are looking at a little bit of a delay because we have to have that conservation meeting because we really rather have that and Dave's comments before we turn the plan okay. again. Okay, I have a question for, for Luke. You you uh, mentioned you have a replication area. Is, this, is there an area floodplain that you're filling in? Is that why you're doing the app replication? It's across, yeah, I think. Uh, it's the, BB the BBW uh, impact, yeah. So it's, there is a flood zone, 100-year uh, flood elevation, but it's, it's confined within the, uh, the rare wetland area that we're not impacting. But the, the replication is, is BBW. It's not flood compensation. Oh, it's not flood, okay. So this is one and a half times the area of the uh, crossing. Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you use for the net crossing? The reinforced concrete pipe or uh, open bottom uh, box collar? Okay. I I mean it's not it's not a dust. I just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Do you have on this? Uh, no, only I was just going to mention that DCI will be beginning their review soon. Well, they're reviewing it. Yeah, should, I think we yeah, it looks like a, it looks to be like a reasonable plan, a reasonable use of the land. So I hope it all works out well. I do, I do have one question. Go ahead, Chris. Phase, the phase two building, what's that going to be used for? So, uh, it says the uses, permitted uses in the IO district. Well, if, if we were to have built it now, we would be looking for the same exact type of uses they have because we would have liked to have made it one big building. Yeah. So it would have been you know, offices, the same types of you know, offices. Nature. Maybe there would be a little bit of outdoor storage with it. Who knows? But back there, there is no outdoor storage. It's just going to be you know, offices with some indoor storage and then parking. That's okay. it. I was just, just no, curious. No, well, certainly it's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> do, you, uh, Sergio, do you intend to uh, use uh, that rear building for your business, or is no. it, or you or that, okay? So that's going to be like a rental property. Exactly, it would be third parties. So. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, they just quadruple the size, right? We're going to use it. Yeah. Short-term leases, just more traffic case. stops. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Well, if um, thank you very much. If that's uh, what we have, then we'll. Uh, I guess we'll wait to hear from Dave. Did you want to open it up? What do you want to put oh, it, it up open up to the public? We don't have we have anything. Okay, um, this is a public hearing, that is correct. Um, so I will open it up to the public. For a questions? Do you direct all questions through the chair? I know I Say your name and address when you ask a question. Any questions from the public? Okay, well, we're going to leave it open as a public hearing anyway. That is because we're going to, we'll still be receiving more information from um, from our peer review engineer as well, and uh, and at that point we'll uh, we will we'll come back and uh, and, and review what he brings to us. So. Okay, you want to say that? Okay, so um, yeah. Got a date? 
So I just wanted to mention that our next meeting would have been May 3rd, but that's because that's election day. We will not be meeting that night. So our next meeting date is scheduled for May 17th. So do you think, I apologize for interrupting, do you think they will have a common, I, I just don't want the board to have to have us come back in and not have, have all our comments taken care of. Yeah, I would rather be able to have Dave's comments respond. And honestly, I think with Luke, what do you think, if Dave were to issue you, do you think two weeks is enough? It really depends on the okay. nature of the comments and how, like, involved it is to, to do the So it's going to be at least a minimum two to three weeks. So with Dave, you've got to figure five to six weeks minimum of, of us before we could have a good plan to you. So has anybody think, reviewed any of the drainage calc yet? Or are we going to wait for Dave to do that? Or? I mean, DCI is doing all that. I'm not DCI's sure if John, uh, the town engineer. He, he won't be doing any of the review. I'll be sharing DCI's review with him and then making sure any concerns he may have are addressed. But no, DCI really will be doing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, our upcoming meeting dates after that would be June 7th and 21st. June 7th being the day after town I'm meeting. I'm actually away and I come okay. back on the 7th. Is there a second May meeting? Um, the next meeting in May is, well, actually, the only meeting in May is May 17th, because we're missing May 3rd. So Sergio's asking if we could do it on May 17th, because I can't do it on the 7th of June. So he's saying maybe maybe Dave can be intended to go fast. Well, we can always be one if it turns out to be a problem. Right, they could yeah. always continue with <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we have to, we have to. Okay, so then, so would that May be 8 o'clock, nothing else on that now, right? Nothing else. Okay, so that would be 8 o'clock version. May 17th. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Spears. Mr. Hayden. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the request of continuance of the public hearing of the public hearing for 14 Concord Street until Tuesday, May 17th at 8 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second to any further discussion. If you're not all in favor, please say aye. 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 We're going to show four and table, no opposed. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the 17th. Yep. This is about a guy who's a project. Hopefully, everything's going to go. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It does look like a good project. When. Uh, <laughs> When do you want to start construction? Yeah. I mean, as yeah. soon as possible. As soon as possible. Yeah, as soon as so it wasn't like you were into the fall or you just want to get happen. in there. No. Yeah. <coughs> no. Yeah. yeah. We're building uh, costs. It, they just keep going up. Yeah. Well, I know you're not. I don't know what you do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
take care of that. All right, Danielle, anything else? Do you have anything else? I think we're all, I think yeah. we got it. I guess we got everything in the yes. place. Yes, we did. She kept it just with the children's book. She kept it just with the children's book. She kept it just with the children's book. I was just shocked, honestly. Happy, but shocked. We did good. Okay, well, uh, that being the case, um, then I will, uh, I'm going to close our meeting tonight, and, uh, and then we're all set to look Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you May 17th, because May 3rd we are not meeting because of election. Thank you.